Erica, which is the, the crowning work of secular Jewish scholarship in the last 50 years, and you look up afterlife, the very first sentence is, Judaism has always a firm belief in an afterlife. It's simply that Judaism doesn't talk about it very much because it wants our focus to be on this world, which is once again right. another reason why I chose Judaism as the only religion of which I'm aware that uh, places its primary focus on this world. How much questioning of your faith do you do? Is it a daily struggle, or is it something that you've just decided to accept, and this is your path, and this is you believe what God wants for you? Uh, well, many of my teachers found me the most challenging student they ever had, and I think that there'd be quite a few rabbis who found me the most challenging congregant they ever had, so this is something I engage in continually. Would you like to be a rabbi? No. Why not? I just want to devote myself to writing, and uh, I mean, to, to be a rabbi, <laughs> you'd have to... I just want to write write what's true. To be a rabbi, I have to like protect the faith, and uh, and I'd have to put other priorities before writing, and that's not what I'm about. Uh, y y you wear a yarmulke. For years, you've been wearing a yarmulke. I'm curious: do people treat you differently when they see that you're wearing a yarmulke? Um, to the extent that people do treat me differently, it's always to treat me better. <laughs> I mean, it's such a... Like, America is such an amazing country. Like, I've never experienced anti-Semitism. Most of the Jews I know who I've, who I've asked this question have, have never experienced uh, anti-Semitism. So, like, in America, if you, like, take your religion seriously, you're loved for it. So, unless you're, perhaps you're a Muslim. Well, you're... Yeah, <laughs> yeah good caveat. Uh, what... Um Oh, but then again, you're here in Los Angeles. Have you ever traveled in the deep south wearing a yarmulke? Um, I was in Orlando, and, and I drove around, and I think, like, some some kids drove by in a truck and, were, like, yelled at me. But, you know, I don't recall anything expressly anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, and I've, I've worn a yarmulke in Australia, in Brisbane, where there are only 2,000 Jews in a city of a million and a half. So, um so in America and and in Australia, it's it's been real easy. Um, now send me to Eastern Europe or the former Soviet Union uh, with a you know yarmulke and seat seat down to my knees, and uh, that may be a very different experience. Or Paris. Yeah, Paris, scary. Um, yeah, I I did go to Paris and I did take my yarmulke off there, so which I hated doing, but uh, it seemed like the uh, the smart thing to do. You also, uh, of recent, have grown a beard. It's a kind of scraggly... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, how long have you had it, and what was the impetus for that? Well, I've, I'm 42, and I started growing it in February, and the impetus was an article I read in the February issue of Commentary magazine by an Orthodox rabbi, Mayor Soloveitchik, who happens to be clean-shaven, and his article was about the significance of the beard in Judaism. And I read it, and I was so convinced by the article. And then I went to lunch, and I sat next to this guy who was a co convert to Judaism but had this beautiful, long, gray beard. And I said, oh, I want that, I want that. And I haven't shaved since. Uh, do people treat you differently when they see you with a beard? Yeah, people don't like the beard. And I went back to Loma Linda University about six weeks ago. My dad was coming through town for an evangelical tour, and uh, he wanted me, if I ca he didn't want me to come, but if I did come, he wanted me to sh shave off my, my beard, uh, which I refused to do, and then, like, some friends from childhood who I ran into there were also giving me heaps about my beard, so a lot of people do give me a tough time about the beard, they find it really ugly. Is it going to stay forever, or you think this is just a phase? The only reason I would shut off my beard is if a woman that I was in a serious relationship with asked me to. But I'm not going to do it for just any floozy. Um, and what, <laughs> what, um, uh, what was the significance? The, the rabbi wrote what that, Im that impressed you that you felt like this was... I, you're, this is, again, a religious affectation, right? Yeah, well, there are two different commandments in the Torah against uh, cutting your beard, basically. And it has to do with accepting who you are as an adult and the distinctions between adults and children. Like, until I stopped shaving, I've been using Grecian formula for 15 years prior. Like, you know, trying to preserve my childish, twinkish, 
no looks, but I decided to put my twink days behind me and uh, stop using Grecian formula and just be who I am and let the beard grow and kind of accept adulthood and responsibility and and uh, you know the the gray beard and the gray hair and and everything that goes with it instead of constantly you know shaving and and pouring on the Grecian formula and you know trying to look like a kid and trying to hit hit on eighteen year old girls. Now I may may still you know have my weaknesses for the fairer and younger sex, but at least I got this big old beard holding me back, so I'm less likely to get into trouble. <laughs> this is TalkRadio1.com. I am Mark Germain. Luke Ford is on the line. Uh, he is also here in Los Angeles. He is a blogger. Um, thousands of people check out his blog every day. He's been writing it for o- almost a decade now, and uh, he is famous for his Spartan lifestyle and uh, his ability to turn gossip into news. And uh, there's a there's another side to you which we haven't even ta- started talking about. And I want to get into that in just a minute, but I, I'm I'm I, I want to focus a little more on the beard. Do you like the way it feels and the l- way it looks when you look at yourself? Uh, I, I, it was very scratchy for a while. It was driving me absolutely nuts. I hated it. And no, I don't like how it looks. <laughs> but I kind of like the idea of not having to shave anymore and just, you know, just being who you are. Just like, let it grow, you know, let the gray come on and, you know, and it also, it's good in that I'm a very nervous person and it gives me something to do because I now, I, if you're, if people are looking at my live cam right now as we speak, I've got my live cam on, I'm like running my fingers through my beard. So whenever I'm nervous or I want to look profound or it just seems like the thing to do when you're opening up a volume of Talmud is to start tugging on your beard. So it's like they say in Hollywood, whenever you take a meeting and you're offered something to drink, always say yes, because it'll give you a prop in your hand, something to do. So always take that, that water or whatever. So now I don't, I don't need the props because I got the beard. I can just keep strumming my, my fingers through my beard and pulling on it and looking really Talmudic. Um, <laughs> do you, did As you, God would want me to. Yes. Do you strap? I don't know what it is, the writings to your arm. What is that? Yeah, yeah, tefillin. I strap on the tefillin, yeah. You do that every day? Yeah, every morning. Every morning? Yeah, every morning. Yeah. And you have it with you all day? So if I, if I saw you on the street at 3 in the afternoon, you'd, you'd have that on your arm? No, but I did have a little phase where I did wear them all day. I was like, looked at as total, you know, even more weird than I normally looked at. But that was just like a passing phase about 15 years ago. Um, so now I only put them on in the morning, then I take them off. Uh huh. And you like the. Um you like the rituals of the, of Judaism because there's a lot. There's a lot to know and a lot of holidays and a lot of. I mean, do you, how how good is your Hebrew? Uh, my Hebrew is not so great, um, but I I do like I do like some of the rituals. Um, sometimes it's just like too much. It's like <laughs> enough with the religion already. Uh, when was the last time you had a cheeseburger? Oh, I've never eaten meat in my life. So ne- ne- oh, that's right. Seventh-day Seventh Adventist, Adventist vegetarian. Right, right, so. That's right, right. Wow. Man. And I don't drink, and I've never even smoked marijuana or done any illegal drug in my life. Wow. Uh, you've never, no alcohol at all? You've never had a taste? I, I, I've i had a taste of alcohol, but I've never, like, drunk. Yeah. To, like, okay, let's drink. Interestingly, have I haven't either. I've never been even tipsy on alcohol, because I don't like the, the taste. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, uh, and I haven't done any drugs other than marijuana, and it's been a while since I've done that. Wow, see see the similarities? Because we have the same birth date. Like, the, the astrological similarities are eerie. Uh, well, I, I actually attribute it a little bit to being Jewish, that there are not a lot of drunk Jews. Just in general, I think that that the alcohol gene is not predominant, especially in... in uh, um, not Sephardic, the other kind of Jew, uh, Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi Jews, which is what I am. Right. Well, I'd contend actually it's it's Judaism system of values of uh, instilling discipline that is is the primary uh, factor here, and so that I predict that the more secular Jews get, such as like you, uh, the more likely they are to have drug and alcohol abuse rates uh, very similar to the Goyim. Well, I have three older brothers, and none of us are drinkers. None of us are drug users. Uh, we're all uh, happily married to our first wives. Um, and, I, you know, it's not because my parents instilled these values in us. It's just the way it is. I mean, we all went to college. We all have college degrees. I, 
I but I think it's almost uh, luck and genes, not necessarily the role of my parents, if you can believe that. Although my parents did a fine job, I just think that uh, 